Hi, my name is Jonathan, I'm a Londoner, and I'd like to tell you a story. It's a story about migration, and it's a story about my dad. His name is Kua Kui Chan. He was born in a village called Wang Zhangli, or Wang Hangli, in the Guangdong province of China in the late 1940s. A bit of context, this is China shortly after the Second World War. There was a lot of poverty, life was tough, especially in the little villages like the one that my dad grew up in. He lived with his mum, but I understand that she wasn't really around that much. Um, she had to earn a living in a nearby city, so often she'd be gone for months at a time. His dad worked in Hong Kong, so he wasn't around. Um, and so actually, my dad had to spend a lot of time fending for himself from quite a young age, from age six. So when you have to look after yourself from such a young age, you become very independent. Uh, when he was eight or nine, he learned how to cook. And he was a pretty good child fisherman to boot, which sounds quite cute. But the reality was that sometimes if he didn't catch his dinner, then they wouldn't have anything to eat. So life was tough. They were very poor. They didn't have much. Um, he tells me that he had his first pair of shoes when he was nine years old. In order to give him a better life, my grandma put my dad on a boat for Hong Kong uh, when he was age 11. Now, back then, traveling from China into British Hong Kong was prohibited for people like my dad. Um, so this was an illegal passage, quite risky. Add to that, there was a typhoon. The typhoon rocked the boat with such ferocity that one of the adult passengers had to hold on to my dad to stop him from going over the edge. The journey took three days. It went via Macau. My dad was given one dollar um, to buy food on the boat. Um, but he was so startled by the experience that he didn't eat anything or drink anything for three whole days. So they make it to the harbour of Kowloon in Hong Kong. And my dad and the other illegals, I suppose, make their way to a rendezvous point at a family friend's flat. This was September and mid-autumn festival was in full flow. It was, it was party time. There was lots of food at this flat. And my dad, having not eaten for three days, thought, great, I am so hungry. I'm going to eat all this food. And so he starts eating this food. But what happens to the body when you don't eat for three days is it just can't take solids. So he ends up vomiting all this up. In the end, he just had to have soup. Um, after a day or so, his, his dad, who uh, lived in Hong Kong, came to pick him up. We're now in the late 1950s, Hong Kong. My granddad worked as a labourer on a construction site and he actually lived on site in a cabin. So when my dad was 11 years old, um, he moved in with his dad and lived on site. So it was a pretty difficult start in Hong Kong. Um, in order to get into a local primary school, my dad had to have private tutorials to get his English up to speed. Um, but he was a bright lad. Uh, he eventually joined a primary school and quickly shot up to the top of the class. Um, he won a scholarship, which meant that his dad didn't need to pay his school fees. Eventually, he moves out of the site cabin and moves into a bedsit to live by himself uh, when he was 13 years old. And I asked my dad, was it difficult to live in a bedsit in a city by yourself at 13? To which he just replied, I was living on my own since I was six, so, you know, it was fine. Such a different life. Um, so he moves to secondary school, um, which he then leaves when he's 16 years old um, to work on a building site as a labourer. This was a back-breaking job. He worked seven days a week, no weekends. Back then in Hong Kong, your only time off was during the public holidays, of which there were two a year. Apart from that, no break. So we worked on sites. 
Uh, but he also had a thirst for knowledge, for learning. And he recognised that this was the only way that he could improve his life and achieve a more comfortable life. And so he works on sites and he enrolled for night colleges in the evenings. He had a big interest in construction and he wanted to be an architect. So he worked hard, gaining knowledge, gaining site experience and moved up on site to become a foreman. And all this self-initiated education eventually paid off. He found himself in office jobs, working, for example, uh, as a draftsman in a civil engineering firm. Uh, one of these jobs is where he met my mum. This is a photo of my dad and my mum on a weekend trip with their colleagues. And this was shortly before they started dating. Eventually, he got a great job working in the Hong Kong government architecture office, uh, working as an architectural assistant. And he tells me this was a really proud moment for him. And it is incredible when you think about, you know, where he came from, from that little village in Guangdong. And now he was, he was here drafting for the Hong Kong government. So things are finally looking up for him. He finds time to do things that he enjoys. So he's a keen swimmer. One of the things he's really proud of is um, swimming the Cross Harbour Race, which was a prestigious swimming competition in Hong Kong. And he did that in 1971. And he eventually marries my mum and they had a daughter together. Later in 1971, there was a major upheaval in their lives. They decided to sacrifice their relatively comfortable life in Hong Kong and move to England. And this was primarily because they wanted their daughter to have a really good education and they felt that England was able to offer this. My dad came first in the Christmas of 1971, followed by my mum a year later with their then two-year-old daughter. And this is a picture of my dad in England seeing snow for the first time. So he doesn't stop for one moment. He recognises that he can't practice architecture in the UK without the qualifications. So he found work in a local takeaway to keep the income flowing. And whilst working full time in the takeaway, he carries on learning in night colleges, taking on courses such as a higher building certificate, structural engineering, quantity surveying, and he offered architectural services for free to family, friends and relatives. Uh, he tells me that during quiet periods in the takeaway, he would actually do uh, planning applications, draft drawings on the takeaway counter. And he does all of this whilst raising a family with my mum. About this time, my older brother had been born in the UK. So whilst working in the takeaway, um, my dad would see builders coming in to um, to get their special fried rice or whatever and he thought as a way of getting his foot on the construction ladder he approached these uh, these builders and just asked them straight up hey do you need any work do you need any quantities measured i'll work for free um, and eventually he did find work with uh, with a contractor um, uh, working as a quantity surveyor and he ended up doing quite well Eventually, he set up his own contracting company, Chan Construction, in 1978. He didn't realise his dream to become an architect, because at the time, he thought that actually setting up his own business um, was a much more reliable way for him to provide for his family. So he set up Chan Construction, but he also set up um, a takeaway business, a Chinese takeaway business with my mum which she helped to run. So these two businesses provided for the family. And my parents achieved their goal when they moved to this country. All three of their children received university education. Our parents have both sacrificed so much. They've crossed an ocean, they've started afresh, a monumental effort to give their children a better life. And they have. Uh, here I am in London. I'm a product of them. I'm a product of their graft. 
I'm Afi. I now work as an architect in East London. Uh, this is one of my projects that I showed my dad a couple of years ago. And when I showed him, he burst into tears because he was so proud. Um, my brother is an art director, a graphic designer also in London, and my sister's a lawyer who subsequently moved back to Hong Kong. And this is a recent photo of the whole family um, just about to have dinner in Hong Kong. So what a journey. Thank you for listening to my dad's story and be sure to check out the other amazing stories that you can find at East. Thank you.